Six months before Montreal's Expo 67 opened to the world, thousands of Ottawa football fans flocked to the site to settle an historic feud with Hamilton in an Eastern Conference showdown. In a more orthodox setting for the West, Regina fans were coldly confident that the Winnipeg Grey Cup veterans could be whipped, despite the Bombers' habit of winning the tough ones. Ottawa was out for blood, and the Cats had given some earlier by losing the first playoff game 30-1 to on home ground. Ralph Sazio had cause for concern. For Winnipeg's Bud Grant and quarterback Ken Plain, it had been a season of rebuilding a team that had dominated Western football for years. Regina's Ron Lancaster had been pulling miracles out of the fire all year, and coach Eagle Keys had his boys thinking like winners. For Russ Jackson and Frank Clare of Ottawa, the same sort of miracle against their traditional nemesis seemed possible. And that's how it went. Hamilton's celebrated defense wasn't functioning, and their offense never got off the ground. The second game read like the first. Mercilessly, Ottawa piled up a 72-17 total for the two games. In the Western two out of three game series, Regina had taken the opener handily but faced a renewed bomber attack in the second as Winnipeg tried valiantly to salvage the series. But late in the game, Saskatchewan turned the tables to make it a tidy two straight. Loyal fans mobbed the team that had never tasted Grey Cup champagne. For Frank Clair, after a season of only three defeats, a fourth was unthinkable. It was on to the Grey Cup. <laughs> Bomby, booming Vancouver braced itself for the Grey Cup happening. Some fans found wings despite the Air Canada strike, but most of the human cargo of celebrants came in on the ground. But whether they came from the sky or out of a train or bus after a long land journey, they came with sides chosen, colors flying, ready to overflow the city with football fervor. The station was turned into a 1966 gold rush scene, and Vancouver had its welcome ready, a good old-fashioned one. Downtown Vancouver was clogged with a festive rush of dedicated and dandified fans. The biggest sports convention of the year jammed hotels with a wild array of national delegates. And there were serious meetings too. Just about every sports writer in Canada attended a special breakfast that morning, chaired by Jack Wells, president of the Football Reporters of Canada. The much respected commissioner of the Canadian Football League, Sidney Halter, was the center of attention. A great name in Canadian football history, retiring with honors and with the applause he deserved. Another name was about to go down in history as a formal football crowd filled the cave for the 1966 Grey Cup pageant and ball. For the well-fed guests, the dessert on the menu was beauty. Nine of the prettiest team members from across the country helped the audience forget briefly gridiron politics and enjoy the feast. A tiger kitten from Hamilton, Marion Harris caught the judge's eye as second runner-up, and a gentle Saskatchewan Rough Rider, Joanne Martin, was named first runner-up. The judge's decision was final and favorable. Miss Toronto Argonaut, Dale Ann Young. Hostess Carol Ann Nichols added the crowning touch, and as Miss Grey Cup, the lovely 18-year-old rode the parade in the place of honor. The red carpet was out for the first evening parade in Grey Cup history. The city and province went all out to make fans forget they were a long way from home.
Premier Bennett stood shoulder to shoulder with the 150,000 spectators. It was a carnival under the lights in downtown Vancouver. Two staple fairs on the coast, fish and football, in which order nobody bothered to ask. Carnival or not, there was the odd reminder that football rivalries weren't completely forgotten. There could be only one winner for Miss Ottawa Roughrider, but win or lose, next year the battle lines would be drawn for the cup game in her own city. If Canada, at a ripe 99 years of age, had a reputation for being a reserved old lady, this parade proved the old girl could really swing and whoop it up. Prairie sent a jubilant mounted posse into town to lasso, hogtie, and bring back alive that coveted silverware. They brought their queen to help out and a lot more girls than are found in the average posse. A whole province had one thought. Saskatchewan could go-go all the way. Fans filling Empire Stadium were buzzing with speculation. All the odds makers, and most of the sports writers, saw the game as a foregone conclusion. Ottawa would take it. But the Prairie folk weren't impressed. Saskatchewan was up and full of fight as they trotted out on the field to establish another first against historic odds. It had been a season of firsts. Across the field, the cream of Canadian football looked confident and ready. Only the official kickoff remained, and it was performed with gusto by Canada's number one football devotee, Prime Minister Pearson. As Frank Clare fires up his players, time is running out. And for the first time in 15 years, Ottawa and Regina are about to meet each other in a Grey Cup game. Now Fred Scambatti and Dick Chateau. Referee Al Driver of Winnipeg signals the timer's bench, and the 1966 Grey Cup game is underway. A bench and kicks off for Saskatchewan. Scott, number 16, receives for Ottawa, strides in behind Gaines, a 31-yard return as number 30 Bennett and Dumelli move in for the tackle. The important first offensive opportunity has gone to Ottawa. Quarterback Russ Jackson, number 12, directs the attack for the Eastern Conference champion. And off to Jim Dillard. Wayne Shaw, number 50, is assisted by Ed McWhorters on the stop. Ottawa benefit from two offsides committed by the over-eager Saskatchewan wing line and accomplish a first down by rushing to put the ball into play at their own 49. Jackson receives good blocking from Walderzak and Perdricks. Complete to Tucker. He sprints away from Dumelli. Touchdown. An electrifying 61-yard pass and run play. The try for the extra point by Racine, not good. Ottawa leads Saskatchewan 6 to nothing in the game is just two minutes, 28 seconds old. Racine, the veteran from Cornwall, Ontario, kicks off. Buchanan on the four-yard line. Collared by Obilovich after a 19-yard return. The first test of the Ottawa defensive unit. They've given up an average of just over 12 points per game during this season. Quarterback Ron Lancaster, number 23. Complete to Barwell. A sparkling 46-yard advance. Gilbert makes the tackle. All-star flanker Hugh Campbell, number 31, wide to the left, on first and 10 at the Ottawa 42. 
The pass protection is extremely good. Lancaster tries for his prime target, Campbell. Poirier covers the play. Second down, Lancaster again tries the air lane. A poised move as he steps up into the pocket. Intended for Barwell, too high. The Western title holders are forced to give up the ball by punting. Ford's seasonal average was 39.6. He's close to that with his kick. Klein receives. Brought down by Gerhardt for no return. Ottawa first down deep in their own zone. Stewart on the wing reverse. Dempsey number 77 seals the opening and holds the gain to four yards. Second and six. Jackson runs the option. Ekstran, McWhorters, and three other aggressive Saskatchewan attackers swarm over the talented pivot. Two plays later, second and three at the Ottawa 22. Scott on the end sweep. Makes the first down with a yard to spare as Cossett drives him to the turf. With play at the Ottawa 26, Jackson attempts to confound the Saskatchewan defense. The entire backfield in motion. The pass intended for Watkins. Cossett and West number 12 are the defenders. On second down, Ron Atchison, number 41, in his 15th season with Saskatchewan, leads the rush. Intended for Watkins. Intercepted by West. Escort service from Bennett. Jackson forces West into touch. A 38-yard return. A dejected Watkins returns to the Ottawa bench. The Saskatchewan offense is always dangerous with the crafty Lancaster in control. In slow motion, a splendid fake by both Reed and Lancaster on the play pass action. Good execution for Warden. Touchdown! Warden's first major score in postseason play. The extra point is added by Abenson. As Saskatchewan take full advantage of the pass interception, they lead 7-6. Abenson kicks off. Bo Scott has trouble, and he runs into more as five Western Rough Riders ground him on the short return. Three plays after the kickoff, Ottawa on their own 27. Dick Chateau, your comment on this play. Russ Jackson shows us, Fred, why he's Canada's top player for 1966. Jackson's always tough when he gets a little room to operate. He fakes well to set up a play, can run or pass. This is what happens if your defensive end's taken out of a play. A 16-yard gain before he's nailed by number 50, Wayne Shaw. The line of scrimmage at the Ottawa 43, first down, Ron Stewart outraces his blocking, advances seven yards before Dempsey and Dushinsky ground the former Queen's University star. Saskatchewan coach Eagle Keys. At the Ottawa 53, Jackson changes tactics. Pressured by McWhorters. For Tucker, his second successful completion with just inches to spare. In the final minute of the first quarter, Ottawa and Saskatchewan territory, Jackson attempts to sustain the drive. Challenged by Ekstrand. Complete to Robert. The tackle attempt by Wayne Shaw and Atchison fumble. Recovered by Dempsey for Saskatchewan. The first quarter ends. Saskatchewan leading 7-6. to six. The first play of the second quarter. Lancaster from his own 23. Sends Buchanan wide. Gilbert reacts to crash him into touch after a five-yard gain.
The strong protective line allows Lancaster time to find the sensational flanker Hugh Campbell, immediately brought down by Poirier after a 13-yard pass. The explosive Saskatchewan offense presents many problems to Ken Lehman and his defensive unit. Buchanan on a sweep, Benesik attempts a block and Gaines makes the tackle. Two plays later at the Ottawa 42, Lancaster utilizes Buchanan as a pass receiver. He avoids Klein and Poirier, a great catch for a 23-yard advance. Enjoying good field position in the Ottawa zone, Lancaster out of the passing pocket. He spots Ford in the end zone. The pass through Obilovich's hands to Ford. Touchdown! What about that play, Dick Shadow? Well, Fred, it was a fine effort by both players. Obilovich had one of the tougher passes to try and intercept, a jumping, high, hard reception. Ford had to do as all receivers are told, keep your eye on the ball. And of course, be at the right place at the right time. The accurate abension kicks the extra point. The Western Challengers lead 14 to 6. Play is resumed with Ottawa assessed a 15-yard penalty for roughing during the convert attempt. From the Ottawa 50, Gaines receives the kickoff. Wally Dempsey spills him with help from Cliff Shaw and Bennett. Ottawa, first and 10 at their own 25. Jackson drops back. Moves to safer ground. It's a broken play. Jackson finds Tucker. West is unable to stop the fleet-footed native of Windsor, Ontario. Touchdown! Tucker's name enters the Grey Cup record book. He ties the previous standard for touchdown passes with his second scoring catch. Racine's try for the extra point is good, but Saskatchewan still lead 14 to 13 after the two major scores within 42 seconds. The Eastern Rough Riders are in an unfamiliar position. They haven't been behind in many games this season. Buchanan takes Racine's kickoff. Gene Gaines makes the tackle after a 25-yard return. On first down, Buchanan is sent inside the tackle, but Bloom restricts the gain to three yards. Second down at the 28, Lancaster tries to use Reed as a receiver, but the Ottawa rush results in a hurried pass and Saskatchewan are forced to punt. Ford's second kick of the game. Gilbert receives, the bench is down quickly. There's little opportunity for a respectable return. First down, Ottawa. Jackson counters with Stewart. Number 27, Dushinsky and Ekstran stripped the blocking that gains a mere yard. Fred, this Ottawa club gained over 2,400 yards during their 14 regular season games. But this Saskatchewan defense has really been tough today. Jackson for Tucker. But he fails to connect. The first incompletion and in four tries by this pair. Klein sets to kick. A 37-yard average during the season. 51 yards this time. Wolosiak concedes the single point, erasing any possibility of a fumble or bad field position. The score tied 14-14. Saskatchewan first down, power blocking. Reed crashes for five yards before being stopped by Brown.
Second down, Ron Lancaster in slow motion, an extravagant move. Receives great pass protection for Warden. Complete. Gaines and Gilbert make the tackle after the sparkling 42-yard play. Inside the Ottawa 40, Lancaster averts to the ground game. Reed grinds for three yards. Collins makes the tackle. Less than 60 seconds remain in the first half. The line of scrimmage. Control of this neutral yard is essential for success. Lancaster again to the air. Sufficient time, but Campbell can't control the ball. With seconds remaining, the Ottawa defensive unit forces a field goal try. A mention from the Ottawa 42. Wide. Gilbert saves a point. The first half ends. Saskatchewan 14, Ottawa 14. The third quarter was scoreless, but some of the feature plays gave indications of Saskatchewan taking control of the game with good play and good fortune. Ottawa swept into the national final with an emotional display that produced a convincing win over Hamilton in their two-game series. Frank Clair's coaching and Russ Jackson's field leadership were prominent factors. Early in the quarter, the Western team benefit from yet another break. Lancaster's pass for Warden, intercepted by Bloom. But Gaines is called for interference. Dick, what happened on that play? Fred, you're not allowed to interfere with the receiver once the ball has left the quarterback's hand. Gene Gaines, coming up from behind, interfered with Jim Warden, nullifying an Ottawa interception. Saskatchewan retained possession and continued to use a new offensive alignment they inserted at the beginning of the second half. Buchanan's outside speed is utilized. He's completely recovered from his season-long leg injury. Lancaster persists in calling signal changes at the line of scrimmage. Ford was stopped by the still rugged Ottawa defense. Third down, Abenshin attempts a field goal from the Ottawa 36. The kick is short. Gaines escapes from Brock, but Ekstrand and three mates swarm over the all-star defensive halfback. The Eastern champions are in a dangerous position and Saskatchewan are determined to keep them pinned in their own area. Ottawa cannot move the yardstick. Dillard spilled for a loss. The Saskatchewan defense forces a punt. A frustrated Russ Jackson. Klein kicks. Wolosiak receives, 
and the exceptional 10-yard return puts his team in excellent field location. The confident Saskatchewan team continue their ball control type of game. George Reed, regarded as the outstanding fullback in the Canadian Football League. No wonder he had a 5.3-yard rushing average during the regular season. Reed's 1,409 yards, a major portion of the Saskatchewan total of 2,638 yards on the ground. To complement their attack, Ron Lancaster's passing. His average was 60%. The Regina school teacher selects Campbell as his target again. The sure-handed Huey makes an admirable catch, evading his men. At the end of three quarters in the 1966 Grey Cup game, the score remains tied. Saskatchewan 14, Ottawa 14. Frank Clare's defensive unit can't seem to contain this tough Saskatchewan club. They've been unbeaten in their last three games at Empire Stadium and look as if they're out to make it number four. First down at the Ottawa five. Lancaster on the move. Pass or run. To Campbell, touchdown! Typical of 17 scoring catches by Campbell as he established a CFL record this season. The convert by Avention is good. Saskatchewan lead Ottawa 21 to 14. The five touchdown passes in this game set a Grey Cup record. Frank Clare was named coach of the year, but now the question is, can his Ottawa team break the jinx of defeat in Grey Cup games for previous award winners? Avention kicks off. Gaines receives. Bennett ignores a blocker to make the tackle after a 40-yard return. It's up to the Ottawa offense. Can they move the ball? First down on the Ottawa 50. Jackson goes to the air. Stewart, the intended receiver. Dumelli covered. Second down. Jackson repeats the aerial attempt. The imposing Saskatchewan rush spoils the pass for Tucker. Cossett on the near side and Wolosiak back to receive. Klein punts. The former Winnipeg player who was in the 1957 Grey Cup game, driven down by Roberts, Perdricks, and Andy Shaw. The late arriving Thompson is charged with piling on. A 15-yard penalty. First down, Saskatchewan on their own 43. Lancaster keeps the ends tight. Buchanan is sent inside. Gets cursed blocking. Slashes for a 15-yard advance. The score, field position, and time remaining dictate that Saskatchewan stay on the ground. With backs like Buchanan and Reed, the Riders have the man for the job and the supporter. Ball control is the name of the game. Saskatchewan first down at the Ottawa 47. Buchanan gains six yards. Lehman leads the tackler. The Saskatchewan offensive team has the momentum, and Ottawa must try to stop their main threat, George Reed. He crashes through Gaines and Collins, but Conroy prevents a breakaway. The advance is 10 yards. Play at the Ottawa 31. Lancaster sets behind that efficient wing line. Hand off Reed. No stopping him. Touchdown! Avention adds the extra point. The score is 28 to 14. Joe Poirier. 
The last opportunity for Ottawa. A bench and kicks off. Gaines retrieves the short effort. Gerhardt makes the stop. Time running short for the gallant Ottawa team. First down at the Ottawa 35. Swing pass. Jackson to Stewart. A fine run, but the well-executed play is nullified by an infraction. Roughing the call, a 15-yard penalty. Jackson's lone remaining hope is through the air. He combines with Roberts, a 17-yard gain. Dempsey halts the play. Commissioner Halter and the Grey Cup await the winners. Desperate measures are a necessity. Stewart takes a handoff. Pass for Jackson. Intercepted by Gerhard. It's been a tough day for the Ottawa defense, but they'll be trying to get that ball back for one last chance. Ron Lancaster just wants to control the ball and run out the clock. So you give it to your best back, George Reed. The poised, white-sweatered offensive unit has taken the Ottawa attack away with their ball control technique. Very few moments remaining, no let-up. Buchanan sweeps the end for four yards before Gilbert has him. Come on, baby, let's go. Get to him. Ford sets to kick. Fine is 10 yards deep. Concedes the final point of the game. And it's 29 to 14. Hey, it's on ice now. The concluding play of Canada's annual football classic. Bo Scott takes a handoff. Tackled by number 50, Wayne Shaw. The Western Rough Riders win the 1966 Grey Cup game with a startling 29 to 14 victory over Ottawa. Would you believe Saskatchewan? The Ottawa fans couldn't. Neither could player of the year Russ Jackson. But ex-Ottawa Rough Rider Ron Lancaster could. For the 19,000 faithful fans who jam every Regina home game and make the city of 130,000 the biggest little football town in Canada, this game was a team's reply to all the devotion lavished on it by the community over the years. The payoff, Earl Grey's $50 dish on its way to the biggest civic celebration in years.